What is your philosophical or religious view of the human soul? I'd love to hear your perspective in the comments. In the meantime, permit me to share mine. In both Taoist metaphysics and Mahayana Buddhism, there's a concept called soul dualism premised on yin-yang theory, where everything, all aspects of this universe, can be bifurcated into a yin-yang duality, or also dichotomy. Duality meaning that it comes in a pair, and dichotomy as in you can conceptually divide it into two separate parts. What we conceptualize as our soul has a yin aspect and a yang aspect, Recall in the previous video on spirit maps, we discussed the yin-yang bifurcation of our world into yin spirit realm and yang physical realm. This all relates back to the basic Taoist cosmological principle that all units are in fact dualities of yin and yang. All things are inherently a binary, and so too our soul, which we think of as a single unit, is inherently a binary of yin and yang. Hun po. The yang aspect we call hun, the yin aspect we call po. When we put the two words together, hun po, that means the soul of one who has died. We also conceptualize this soul, this hun po, as still retaining many of the deceased person's personality traits or psyche. Hun is associated with shen, god, divinity, an ethereal or celestial spirit, and po with gui, a term that designates a ghost or devil, some form of a lower vibrational spirit entity. Here we really do need to take a pause and to talk about the translation of gui to devil. In East Asian metaphysical philosophy, we don't quite have the same negative connotation to devil that you might find in Christian theology. Gui is a really broad umbrella term that essentially means a yin dominant spirit entity. The aspect of your soul after you die that returns to heaven, we tend to refer to colloquially as the shen. The shen is your inner divinity. The aspect of your soul that stays behind here on earth after death, which is the aspect of a dead person that's in essence resurrected or contacted in necromancy and mediumship, is your gui. Your hun is in your blood. Since your liver is the storehouse of your blood, your liver is the seat of your hun. Your po is in your breath. And since your lungs store breath, according to traditional Chinese medicine, your lungs are the seat of your po. You'll find that explanation of hun and po in your blood, liver, breath, and lungs in the Ling Shu Jing, the second volume of the Huangdi Nei Jing, or Inner Canons of the Yellow Emperor, an ancient treatise on Chinese internal medicine dated back to around 400 to 200 BC. In astral travel or lucid dreaming, it's your hun aspect that leaves your body while your po remains behind. Do you recall a previous video where we were talking about meng, the word for dream, and how the ideogram resembles someone walking, astral journeying? That's your hun going off on an adventure. A feng shi methods master, a ceremonial magician, is one who possesses the knowledge and experience of ritual work that can communicate to a person's hun and po. The Book of Rites, Li Ji, which you'll remember as one of the five classics which we date back to the Zhou Dynasty, discusses Hun Po soul dualism, noting that the Hun Yang aspect of your soul returns to heaven after death, while the Po Yin aspect of your soul stays here on earth. There's a passage in the records of the grand historian Shi Ji by Sima Qian dated to the early Han, sometime between 145 and 86 BC, that recounts an incident of really drunk people who were passed out in their beds, and an old seer woman observed their hun as dragon spirits flying over their bodies. So your hun, at least according to a Han dynasty seer, looks like dragon spirits. Whereas your po resembles you, it will bear an uncanny resemblance to your physical, tangible body, and also be a projection of your current personality and psyche. According to Ge Hong's Bao Pu Zi, written sometime in the late 3rd or early 4th century AD, the yin-yang dualism of your soul, your hun and po, needs to be in balance for you to be physically and spiritually healthy. If either your hun or your po is weak, or part of your hun po leaves your body, more on that in a second, then you get sick. If both of your hun and po leave your body, then you die. You'll find this discussion in Volume 2, Lun Shen, The Discourse on the Immortals in Ge Hong's Bao Pu Zi. Fun FYI, Aleister Crowley claimed that he was the reincarnation of Ge Hong. Hey, if that's true, then I'm the reincarnation of Cleopatra. 
We can trace back this concept of soul dualism to the Zhou Dynasty in the text Zuo Tuan, written sometime between 700 and 400 BC. Oh, and since the passage refers to Zi Tan, who served as a prime minister around 544 BC, that's probably when this account is dated to. In Zuo Tuan, it's noted that contemporaneous with your birth, your po, or the yin aspect of your soul, is the first to take form. After the po is created, the ying aspect of your soul, the hun, is created from the vital elements of qi. And as you are birthed, the hun and po unite and become fortified. Now about your soul leaving your body, there's a belief that fragments of your soul can take flight and leave your body. Trauma can cause soul fragmentation and that piece to take off, the acts of a demon of some sort. Then once there's been soul fragmentation, a ritual soul retrieval comes into play. There are varying folk and ceremonial or ritual practices for calling the soul back to its body, which you do if and when there's been physical or mental illness. There are different names for these practices. One commonly found in Taiwan that's more of a folk practice than ceremonial is called Sojing, a form of soul retrieval. The Ha Ka or Ke Jia, that's me, hi, also have really cool soul retrieval ritual practices. Soul retrieval in the event of soul fragmentation is a form of faith healing, and you'll see it practiced in many Asian traditions, be that South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and throughout the islands of the South Pacific. What we call mental illness today traditionally was explained as loss of a fragment of your po, your yin aspect of soul. The strength of your hun, the yang aspect, is dependent on spiritual cultivation. And I guess you could say the karmic brownie points you earn in life. The aura that you see around a person is one way to gauge the spiritual health of the hun. Upon death, both your hun and your po, the yin and yang aspects of your soul, leave your physical body. The hun contains the storehouse of data that is your karma. So when we say it goes up to heaven, a Buddhist perspective of that is your hun is the part of your soul that gets reincarnated. But your po, which keeps a form similar to your physical body and your personality or psyche, remains behind here on Earth. It just becomes part of the unseen forces here in our atmosphere. Dark matter? Who knows? Maybe. My personal unscientific, ungrounded hypothesis is that the po, yin aspect of all souls that stay behind here in our universe makes up what we've been referring to as dark matter. You hear scientists talk about dark matter as being intangible and yet having mass and having gravitational influence. So I don't know, from my lay spiritual woo-woo perspective, it kind of makes sense. If your po, the yin aspect of soul, is at peace, it's usually just, you know, hanging out in balance with the other forces of nature in our atmosphere, in our cosmos. But if your po is not at peace, then it could potentially cause disruptions. Ghosts, hungry ghosts, and certain classifications of demons could have been the po of a deceased human that is not at peace. When we talk about mediumship and necromancy, we're talking about spirit contacts with the po or yin aspect of soul. The metaphysical theory of soul dualism is how Asians tend to explain why you can reincarnate, but also we can summon the spirit of the dead. The part getting reincarnated is the hun, yang aspect of soul after death, and the part that remains here on earth that we can contact is the po, yin aspect of soul after death. And not to overcomplicate the discussion, but if we want to get technical, then from a Taoist perspective, this fundamental concept of a yin and yang binary aspect of the soul can also be further expressed and therefore fragmented into trinities, sevens, and tens. Like in the same way there is morphology of the human anatomy, there's also morphology or a classification system of the form and structure of your soul anatomy. That, in a 10-minute nutshell, is my philosophical and religious view of the human soul. What's yours?